Now what we're seeing for the aspiring executive is they're free to chase their dreams anywhere in the world. And in fact, not only is it a desire for them to do so, but it's almost a mandatory requirement for the companies hiring them. If you're a global leader operating in this new paradigm, the sort of skills that instantly become more valuable are ones of empathy and understanding. And it's almost expected that you understand how different people are going to develop their careers, what the opportunities are that are available to them. You're culturally sensitive, you're global in your perspectives, and you're worldly in your approach. A lot is said these days about ethnic diversity, gender diversity, but much less about experience diversity. I think that one of the key elements of a good functioning team at the helm of a global company is to have a broad range of global experiences. Bringing all these experiences together will create different perspectives and a much better collective know-how and lead to much better strategic decisions. I think it's incredibly important to have global experience. And when I say that, I do not just mean having lived in different countries, because that doesn't necessarily mean you are a global leader. You're a global leader when you have led a process or led decision-making process or have been part of an executive management team that has defined a strategy, has executed the business management process, and has taken product to market for different countries. That's really when you are a globalist. And the reason why that's super important in today's environment is that I firmly believe that every company who wants to be successful needs to have a top management team and layers below that are a reflection of the markets that they're focused on. When you run a global organization that is comprising of many different teams from many different cultures, you have to be able to deal with that, listen to people, understand the differences, differences in decision-making processes, differences in, in products and how products need to differ from each other in different markets. And you need to spend a lot of time on the ground. Conference calls is good, but physical presence in a market as a leader and connect with your teams and adapt to their styles is incredibly important. And then the Flexibility is not only important from an intellectual perspective, it is also very important from a human perspective. I remember an experience when finishing a construction job in Chile with a very tight schedule and an Anglo-Saxon and American type of contract management, I landed in the Middle East, started my first meeting, opened my book and said, the contract says. And the people on the other side of the table said, Mr. Peters, we are flexible here. Don't worry about it. I learned a lot from it. Yes, they were flexible, but flexibility meant six months of negotiation with a great outcome. But a very interesting difference. The contract did matter. What matters was, the relationship, what people understood and what they wanted to achieve. Indonesia, we really struggled with finding a general manager. We weren't able to recruit a high quality leader. So what I did was I looked at India. In India, I had a very good retail general manager. Then I brought the Chinese in with all their smartphone experience. Together we brought a product out. We took it to market. We overachieved our share goals, very aggressive share goals and we were able to leverage Indonesian experience for the leader, took the Chinese experience, and then me as a Dutchman, as a global manager, was in those meetings to review what the guys had done. And we overachieved and became very profitable with huge numbers and huge market share gain in that market. The advantage that the leading companies have at the moment is they're thinking proactively about global mobility. So rather than just looking in their own backyard for talent as they might have done in the past, what they're recognizing is that people are willing to move and the best executives are actually seeing overseas opportunities as essential to their professional development. So they're changing their scope and they're no longer looking domestically, but they're looking internationally and globally to find the best talent. And then what they're trying to do is move those people through international rotations in order to make sure that they are worldly in their approach and they're able to lead and step up in that new world.